G'day, this is Mr. Thompson, and this is my latest holiday project. It's a magnetic field sensor, and I'm pretty happy with this one. In fact, so happy that I think I'm actually going to sell them. Um, I can make these for a fraction of the price of the commercial ones, and uh, frankly, I think mine is more versatile and easier to use and gives better results than other ones that I've used. So um, if you want to buy one, www.physicsgizmos.com.au. Um, but anyway, let's get it. Let's get into it, and we'll have a look at what it does. So, what is it? Well, um, it's a measurement instrument uh, that you can use to measure magnetic fields, particularly small magnetic fields. Um, it has no trouble measuring the Earth's magnetic field, and it's perfect for use in physics experiments to measure magnetic fields produced by electric current. So, let's have a quick look inside. Um, my PCB has a very sensitive low current. Hall effect sensor on the tip there, uh, and that connects with a USB, or not a USB, a um, uh, I squared C bus. There's a microprocessor there, and there's a uh, UART to USB bridge there, which allows it to connect to a um, computer. Now, of course, you don't need to worry about all that because that's all inside. Um, and when I sell them, that's what you'll get. You'll get a, a, a sensor device and a USB cable, and uh, you can download some software from the website. So um, let's have a look how it works. All right, so it's really simple. All we do is plug the USB uh, cable into here. Doesn't need any batteries or any power because it gets power from um, the USB from the computer. Not a lot, it doesn't need much. So I'll plug it into there like that. Oh, that's the wrong way. Okay. Um, <clears throat> now I've got an application here. Uh, that sits on the computer. Uh, it does have to be a Windows computer. Sorry, Mac users, I don't have a Mac, so I can't write Mac stuff. Maybe one day when I'm uh, a famous inventor, I don't know. Um, okay, so what we do now is uh, on the computer here is we just click uh, find the COM port, so COM5, and connect like that. And there we go, and it's now it's starting to read. You can see there, it's, it's as I wave this around, um, it's measuring the Earth's magnetic field there. Um, so it's sensitive enough, enough to do that. So if we have a look at the settings here, um, you can measure in micro Tesla or milli Tesla or Gauss. Uh, you can tear the instrument, zero it. Um, and that's particularly useful um, if you don't want to, or if you want to ignore the Earth's magnetic field when you're doing an experiment, you can sort of cancel that out. Um, it's got, uh, you can measure the magnetic field in the x-axis, the y-axis, or the z-axis. I find the z-axis particularly useful. So if you look at the back here, I've got a little, is that upside down? No, that's right. Um, if you look at the back here, I've got a little diagram there, uh, and so you can easily see which axis is which on the back of the sensor. All right, um, it also has um, different ranges. So you can configure it to plus or minus four gauss, uh, eight gauss, 12 gauss, or 16 gauss, the widest range. So you can choose to be really sensitive or you can choose to have a wider range. It's up to you. Um, and I have also got a calibration slider there. Now, I think mostly you won't use that. I've found the factory calibration is pretty good. Um, but if you want to get really serious, I guess you could use the calibration there. All right, so let's set it running. So it's at the moment it's on Z, Z axis. Um, let's put it on, I don't know, let's put it on Gauss. Um, and you can see here, if we look here, um, as I move in and out like this, oh, if I get too close, it goes over range. Um, this is a particularly strong magnet, and this really is designed to measure magnetic fields produced from an electric current, not from a massive neodymium magnet like that. Nevertheless, there's an experiment right there. So um, if a student wanted to do a student experiment, they could use this and they could look at how the magnetic field strength changes as the distance from the magnet varies like that. So straight away there, that's a, that's a nice, easy uh, experiment that somebody could do. Okay, uh, but let's look at where this thing is really powerful, um, and that is uh, magnetic fields from um, electric currents. So, for example, let me just 
I'll just put a current through here. So I've set up a wire there. So I've got one amp. Uh, put that out of the way. I've got one amp going through this uh, current through this wire here. Um, and there's my positive. There's my negative. So my current is going in that direction. So if we use the right hand screw rule, watch that. We've got the current going that way. So the magnetic field should be going into the page on this side and out of the page on this side so going down that should be we should get a negative reading here and a positive reading here so let's, let's just have a look i'm going to turn my current off for a minute and just place my device there uh, and with the current off i'm going to tear uh, actually i'm going to put it into micro tesla and i'm going to tear my sensor uh, and you know what? I want this to be pretty sensitive. So I'm going to go plus or minus 4G. Uh, tear it again. That's good. So that's a fairly, you know, tear it a few times. That's pretty good. You'll find the magnetic field wanders a little bit. Um, one more time. Okay, that's pretty good. That's pretty close to zero. That's about as good as we'll get, I think. Now, if I turn my current on, my one amp going through here, we can see that we've got a positive current upward current coming out of the page that's uh what's that 4.95 micro tesla and if i move my sensor up here we should find that we've got a negative so it's negative 2.5 depending on where i put it yeah so um six yeah so um so there's a demonstration uh but also uh, there's another experiment there if a student wanted to do a student experiment there they could uh, just set up a ruler like that and they could quite easily measure the magnetic field at different distances from a single current carrying wire. Um, so it's, it is sensitive enough, even though we've just got one wire, uh, so a very small magnetic field that's sensitive enough to, uh, to do that experiment. All right, let's have a look at another one. All right. Okay, um, so one of the suggested experiments in the Queensland syllabus is to measure the magnetic field inside a current carrying solenoid. Here, again, I can, I can slot this into the slinky there. The slinky is acting as a solenoid. I've got a, coil, I've got a current flowing through there. And then I can, on my um, uh, screen there, I can see the, the, uh, magnetic, um, the magnetic field inside the solenoid. Now, um, as far as experiments go, there's a couple of experiments we could do this. I could investigate the relationship between the magnetic field in a solenoid and the current passing through the solenoid. Or the cool thing about using a slinky as a solenoid is by stretching the slinky, I can adjust the turns density. Uh, so by changing the length we can, and counting the turns, we can calculate the turns density. So we could do an experiment here that investigates the relationship between the turns density and the magnetic field keeping the current constant, uh, which is a great experiment. Now, um, there's a bunch of other experiments that you could do. Um, this video has already gone too long, so I won't do any more. Uh, Helmholtz coil is a fantastic thing to investigate. I've had students investigate the magnetic field along the axis of a Helmholtz, of a Helmholtz coil, um, and that's um, that, that gave them really, really good results. Um, but there's a bunch of other things you can do. I'll put some more information on the website. I hope you want to buy one of these things. Um, if you do, go to www.physicsgizmos.com uh, and there'll be information there about how you can get your hands on one or a class set of these. All right, hope you enjoyed the demo. Have a great day.